The statistics, yeah. The statistics, yeah, yeah. The statistics, yeah. If you guys don't know the statistics song I'm singing, oh, singing, then please go check it out as soon as you're done watching this video. It's by Timothy Chalamet, a famous actor who went to my school, Columbia University, and all I have to say is, it's amazing. But please, don't watch it until you've watched this video first, so you actually learn something about statistics. Hey guys, I am so happy right now because just before I started filming this video, my really good friend called me and she told me that she was successfully accepted as a transfer applicant from Emory University to Columbia. And I'm so happy because I helped her with her transfer applications and hopefully she'll be able to go and it's going to be a great time. So I am on cloud nine right now. Hopefully you've all been enjoying my daily series on how you can score as high as possible on your AP exams this May, aka five packs for five, and today I'm back with yet another video, this time on AP statistics. AP stats is probably my favorite AP STEM course, and I definitely liked it a whole lot better than AP Calc, which I also have a video on, so you can go check that out. But that may have been at least partly due to the fact that my teacher let me do a project on statistical demographics in fanfiction, which A, was really fun, and B, probably exposed me as a gigantic nerd, but whatever, nothing you guys didn't already know. Anyway, we're going to go through the same format as in all my other five hacks videos, which is literally just, I'll go through the five hacks that can help you get a five, and make sure that you're subscribed and you have that notifications bell turned on so you don't miss any other AP video or anything else this week and beyond. Like, why wouldn't you, right? It can only help. And also, you can always feel free to follow me on social media and get in contact with me at my email, info at myivyeducation.org, if you need help with anything from preparing to your AP exams, to other tests, to really just about anything academic and college related. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get into the video. So whereas the College Board lists for most STEM APs that calculators are accepted, they actually list on their website that for the AP Stats exam, a graphing calculator is expected. Now, it may be a difference of just a couple syllables, but that means that you definitely want to have yours. And what's more, you want to actually understand it. And what that means is reading the manual. Now, there are already a bunch of videos out there specifically for graphing calculator hacks, and I don't know exactly what kinds of instruments you guys are working with, so I'll keep this part light. But you guys, there are so many cool things that you can do with your graphing calculators that makes the AP exam a lot easier. Now, like if you have a TI-84 Plus Silver Edition, and if you go to Stats, and then you go to edit and you put in your data and you hit calculate, then it'll turn out a bunch of stuff for you just automatically from the sum of x to the sum of x squared to s of x, which is the sample standard deviation, to sigma x, which is the population standard deviation, and a whole bunch of other stuff besides. So you guys can definitely see how this would be necessary for an exam like AP Stats. So bottom line, whatever kind of gear you're packing, get up close and personal with it. Take your calculator out to dinner. Have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your calculator. Buy your calculator flowers. Y'all want to be like two peas in a pod. So while there is some memorization involved, the AP Statistics exam is focused a lot more on explanation and understanding than just rote memorization. So you want to make sure that you're spending your time on the things that actually matter to have memorized because for basically anything that has to do with probability or inferential and descriptive statistics, it'll be on the formula sheet that they give you for the exam. However, you still really want to make sure that you know how to use your calculator to solve and plug those numbers in, which goes back to being familiar with your calculator. Even if you have the formulas, what I'd recommend being familiar with includes linear regression, binomial probability, summary statistics, histograms, scatter plots, residuals, and confidence intervals. If you can solve those with your calculator, then you should be fine. Now, by this, I don't only mean memorizing statistical formulas, though of course that's a pretty big part of the exam. I also mean that there's a fairly consistent formula that you can follow to make sure that for each answer, you're solving it correctly and being able to check your work. 
Now, whether or not you actually have to show that work depends on whether you're in the multiple choice or the free response section, but I'm going to give you guys 10 steps to follow in order to make sure that you're always following the formula to get the best possible answer for each question. One, define the parameters of the question. Two, state your null hypothesis. Three, state your alternative hypothesis. Four, state your significance level. Five, figure out what test you need to use and state it. Six, calculate your sample statistics. Seven, state whether your test meets the specified conditions. Eight, state the formula for finding your p-value and whatever score you need to calculate, whether it's z, t, chi-squared, or whatever, and calculate. Nine, draw your graph. Please, I'm begging you. 10, either reject or fail to reject your null hypothesis based on the p-value and your significance level. short hack but an important one because it can help save you precious minutes on the exam. You really want to be able to familiarize yourself with all of the different kinds of problems that can appear on the test so that as soon as you see it you know exactly what test you need to use, what you're looking at, what you're solving for, and what you need to plug into your calculator to help you do that. In this way it kind of goes back to the first hack where you really want to become one with your calculator. So this hack is the same as one of the ones in my AP Calc video, which you should also definitely go check out, but that's because it's the same principle for both of them. Now that you have the foundation, you've watched this video, you know what you need to study, get off YouTube and go start doing practice problems! It's the only way that you can ensure that you know what you'll really be up against on the test. And apparently we learn best by doing practice tests, as opposed to reading a textbook or listening to a podcast about the material or anything like that. So, now that you know what you need to do, get to it! I believe in you guys. So those are my top tips for AP Stats. It really is a pretty good course and exam, but you do have to put in that little bit of extra effort to really go to the next level, and hopefully this video will help you guys do just that. Make sure if you enjoyed this video that you're liking and subscribing to my channel and all that good stuff, follow me on social media, and comment down below what your best study tip is for AP Stats, and also what other kinds of videos you'd like to see in the near future. Also, let me know if you're freaking out about the exam or if you're feeling pretty chill about it. I know you guys are all going to do amazingly, and I will be back very soon with another video. Bye for now. Hey guys, I am so, hey guys, hey guys. I am super happy today because right before I started something, if you guys, now there are a ton of videos already out there specifically for helping you with all the different calculator hacks out there. But if you have a TI-84 silver everything from the sum of X to the standard, I also mean that there's a fairly, instead, there is a pretty... <sighs> whenever you're looking at a question, when I... you really want to familiar yourself... <coughs> <coughs>